Okay, this is uh, about hour number 12 of assembling the Maker Gear Press Mendel kit. Um, and um, it's gone together pretty well. That includes uh, installing the software and everything for it. Um, one note, this is sort of uh, what you'd consider a hybrid kit because it does have some non-printed parts like they do supply these spring couplings for z-axis um, they also include the printed couplings um, but I elected to put these on uh, they also have these manufactured pulleys for both x-axis and y-axis the idler pulleys are printed, and uh, everything came out really good. The uh, all the motor mounts, the vertexes, and everything are really smooth, and uh, it's hard to tell that they weren't molded. In fact, uh, of course, Maker Gear is known for its uh, hot end. Uh, I will be taking this hot end off when I do my calibration for my uh, extruder, uh, filament extruder, the amount going through the extruder head. Uh, they've got a unique uh, gearbox that uh, mounted to a smaller NEMA 17 motor. Uh, it pinches the uh, filament between this, I don't know if you can see real closely there's a gear in there mounted to the end of the shaft coming out of that planetary gearbox with this spring mount on a pinch bearing mounted in this uh, right here and I've got this loosened up right now uh, just for demonstration um, they use also Instead of printed PLA bushings, they use these uh, self-aligning bronze bushings in all three axes. Uh, also, uh, they use a uh, laser-cut plywood carriage on Y axis, and there's the uh, the uh, bushings but it's sort of like a box. It's uh, it's pretty light and pretty strong. And then the, uh, we've got uh, springs mounted under this plywood right here to where it, uh, in case the uh, extruder nozzle comes in contact with the bed, it has a little give there. Uh, like on a normal Mendel, uh, these would be printed springs going this way and then that way under the bed. Um, that's uh, one of the differences between the uh, the press uh, and the Mendel. Also the two Z-axis motors, of course, where the uh, Mendel has a belt, a uh, looped belt running underneath the machine and one motor to drive both the screws on Z. Uh, so what I'm going to do now, I do have printer face running here on the computer, so I'm going to home the axis here. Here goes X. And Y. and Z and of course Z has uh, uh, very uh, compared with uh, X and Y Z only runs at uh, 200 millimeters per minute 
X and Y are running at 3,000 currently. And I'm not sure if I'll go that fast uh, during actual use. Uh, I still like wiring up my uh, bed power. And uh, I will be taking the extruder back out. Uh, I'm sorry, the hot end back out of the extruder while I do my filament calibration, filament feed calibration. And um, now this fan does not, is not included in the kit. And uh, I've, this uh, spiral wrap is included in the kit. And I broke this piece up right here going to the x-axis carriage uh, to gain a little flexibility. It wasn't really binding, but it, uh, it was stiff, very stiff. So I, I broke it up. And uh, I actually had a piece here on this uh, x-axis motor. It was all it was so stiff. I was afraid it was going to break the wires coming out of the motor, so I took it off. So uh, anyway, uh, yeah. Um, uh, let me load a file up here and actually. Uh, run something. This is a file which some have deemed uh, it's called the Monember ring uh, and uh, this little uh, it's on Thingiverse right here it's called the Mustache ring and uh, uh, it, the reason it's good to print the first print is it makes a circle, flat top, bottom, and sides, plus the little mustache hanging off the top of it there. And uh, the mustache is at different levels, so it actually makes a good uh, test piece to print out. You could, uh, after you print it, if you get a, a complete concentric circle plus flat sides and flat top flat bottom then you'll know your printer is uh, doing an infill correctly uh, also the different layers of the mustache portion itself you can tell how rough that is so it makes a good little test print it won't give you uh, near the uh, accuracy of printing out a 20 or a 40 millimeter uh, test block. A lot of people will do that just to make sure that uh, their accuracy is uh, correct. Okay, I think it's probably loaded by now. So I'm going to close this. I also wanted to show you the other. This is a uh, Lose bot uh, presser Mendel. It's uh, it's it comes in assembled version for twelve hundred dollars. It actually has a wage extruder, which is nothing wrong with that. Um, it uses the conventional pulleys, not printed pulleys, but uh, they use fender washers with a bearing between the. Uh, fender washers. Um, it looks, uh, and the printed couplings, it looks like the standard uh, what you would build yourself if you sourced out everything yourself. Okay, we're ready to run. So, and uh, yeah, by the way, I've got this fan here running off my heat bed power right now. I didn't plug it into the incoming 12 volt, which my power supply is right down here under the table. This is my wife's piano stool, by the way. Um, anyway, I'm running the power up into... Oh, electronics. There's an ad, ad, Arduino uh, uh, 2560 Mega... Uh, Underneath this cover board, which is a Ramps 1.4, uh, 
Uh, this comes with a kit. All this, all this comes with a kit except for this fan right here. And the only reason I'm doing the fan, these uh, Polo Lou drivers, there's four of them on top, one for each axis, uh, plus the extruder. Uh, the, they have little heat sinks on top, but they're so tiny, they generate a lot of heat, so I put that fan on top to uh, take some of the heat away. Uh, talked about the extruder itself. Uh, they use a unique uh, three gear planetary gear setup in here going to that extruder head. It's got a metal uh, gear to pinch between that uh, bearing. The filament goes right through that top hole right there in the white plastic. And uh, so we're going to run this. So all I have to do is hit, sorry, all I have to do is hit print right here. Now it's not going to actually print. I don't have any uh, filament in it and I don't have any heat on it. But I wanted to make this video because this is a major milestone for me today, getting this thing to actually work. I downloaded all the software today uh, using uh, from Arduino.cc. You can get the Arduino IDE, uh, which is required. Uh, you got to have the drivers to talk to the Arduino through the USB port here. And you've got to have. Uh, I'm using Pronerface. Uh, there are others out, but Pronerface seems to work really good with rep wraps. Uh, this progression here on the right, this green bar shows the level. It will constantly move upward as the levels are being printed. So I think we've got just enough time to get this printed and still be within our uh, time limit on YouTube. Uh, yeah, I will be uh, hooking up this uh, print bed. Normally uh, for PLA you would use like 60 degrees Celsius. Uh, for ABS you'd use 110 degrees Celsius. Also on the hot end uh, normally for PLA you would use 185 degrees and for ABS probably maybe 210. There's, uh, there's a little bit of leeway there uh, considering the amount that you want it to actually flow plus ooze control. Of course these extruders, uh, including the Wade's extruder, will back up to control ooze. They will actually take the pressure off the melted plastic in the nozzle to where it won't ooze. So we're progressing nicely. Our bar is coming up. Um, I ran this program earlier. I think it took a little over five minutes to run. And uh, my next video, I'll probably have something to print. Actually, print. Uh, one thing I did notice about these screws is, and something I really don't like is, it goes through this. The screw goes through this bottom bearing, but. Our thrust is all up here pulling on this uh, aluminum spring coupling. So actually our thrust is on the miniature bearings that are in the NEMA 17 motor. I may uh, put a, uh, uh, some jam nuts on top of this bearing. Uh, just to thrust against the bearing itself and not the uh, miniature bearings in the motor. Uh, I think 
to uh, 